Space is very much like the air. We know it is all around us, but we cannot see it, touch it, or smell it, but we know it is there. In this video we are going to see how we can tell what space and air are doing even though we cannot see them. If we release a helium balloon, we see the balloon rise up in the air. This happens because the density of helium is lower than that of the air, and the balloon rises. That is only the vertical motion. Often we also see the balloon drift to the side. This happens because the air is moving. We don't see it moving, but with the balloon we can tell the direction and speed of the air. The velocity of the balloon is the same as the air. When we say that the air is moving, this is with respect to the ground. In relativity, motion is relative. Two objects in inertial frames of reference moving relative to each other each can claim that they are not moving, and that it is the other object that is in motion. That is not the case for accelerations. Accelerations are absolute. When the velocity between two objects is changing, at least one, or maybe both, is in an accelerated state. This is true even in relativity. In relativity, acceleration results in a change in the inertial frame of reference, and they are absolute. Determining which object is in an accelerated state is very easy. There are devices called accelerometers that measure accelerations. Accelerations are not relative to other objects, but are relative to space. If we have a ship in space, and we make the rest of the universe disappear, the ship can still tell if it is in an accelerated state. This acceleration is only relative to space itself, as there would be nothing else to reference. Accelerometers are wildly used in industry. Your cell phone has an accelerometer to determine which way is up. That's why the image rotates when you rotate your phone. Cars use accelerometers to deploy airbags in the event of a crash. They detect the acceleration of an impact. They are used in active suspension systems to smooth out a car's ride. If we attach an accelerometer to a steel pipe, and then have a magnet approach the pipe, as the magnet pulls on the pipe, the accelerometer will measure the change in velocity as the pipe moves towards the magnet. Now let's see what happens when we drop the pipe from a tall building. As we know, the pipe will fall to the ground following Newton's gravity law. As the pipe falls, its velocity relative to the ground will be increasing. But here is the kicker. The accelerometer measures no accelerations. This is not a malfunction. The accelerometer tells us that its velocity relative to space is constant. How can this be? How can the velocity relative to the ground be increasing? but the velocity relative to space remain constant. The only explanation is that space is accelerating towards the ground at the same rate as the pipe. This is what gravity is. The accelerometer is only following Newton's first law that says that a body in motion tends to remain in motion. It follows space to the ground. There is no other explanation for it. If we use relativity's terminology, it defines an inertial frame of reference as a state where the velocity relative to space is constant. When we drop the accelerometer, its inertial frame of reference is accelerating towards the ground. Think about this. An inertial frame of reference accelerating to the ground. It also points to space accelerating to the ground. This is the reason why two falling objects of different mass released at the same time fall at the same rate. Neither can get ahead of the other if their inertial frame of reference is the same. In Newtonian mechanics, force equals mass times acceleration. Since gravitational motion does not create accelerations, the force is equal to zero, and gravity is not a force of nature. Theories that treat gravity as a force of nature are destined to fail. Accelerometers do not tell us the velocity of space, but we can determine the velocity of space by the time dilations that it causes. These are given by Schwarzschild formula for gravitational time dilations. It uses the escape velocity in the Lorentz factor. This is the formula used to calculate gravitational time dilations on Earth for GPS. Essentially, gravitational time dilations are just special relativity effects, as space moves around us, as it falls to Earth. When Newton saw an apple fall from a tree, he derived Newtonian gravity. Einstein's thought experiment sees a man fall from a building that does not feel his own weight. He went on to derive general relativity. In this video, we combine Newtonian gravitational accelerations with Einstein's inertial state of falling bodies to derive a new model for gravity where space falls to Earth at the escape velocity. The behavior of free-falling accelerometers gives us compelling evidence of this. More evidence will be available when an upcoming NASA mission launches the Deep Space Atomic Clock 2, 
as this clock would be expected to slow down when it moves out of Earth's gravitational field.